Hello. In this tutorial, we'll look at how to set up and use the multicam feature in Video Pro X6 and how to edit the video after creating a multi-camera video. Multicam editing is a special mode in the project window. The top two tracks serve as target tracks. Sound and video can be copied from up to nine different source tracks. The program uses multicam to allow you to select the video that you want from a multicam screen in the source monitor while in the playback mode. The videos on the multicam tracks do not show up in the preview monitor, only the source monitor. Whichever camera or video is selected while playing will be copied to track 1, the target track. This is known as multicam cutting. Selecting a different camera or video causes that one to be placed onto track 1 at the location where the selection was made and so on until stop is pressed. Thus tracks 1 and 2 are reserved for the selected video and audio and must be empty to start with. Afterwards editing can be done on tracks 1 and 2 as per normal editing procedures. Just do not move any of the objects on track 1 or they'll go out of sync with the audio. The objects are all the same as if you had trimmed a clip at the front and the back. They can be extended to the left or right, as is normally done. So let's get on with the action. The first step is to import video clips onto tracks 3 and beyond. I have a setting to automatically place the audio on a second track, so the first video goes on tracks 3 and 4, the next on tracks 5 and 6, and so on. Notice that I've left a gap of several seconds at the left side to be able to better move a track to the left if necessary for synchronizing the tracks and to be able to insert easily another object at the beginning. If you do not have the waveform showing for each track, then create the waveform by right clicking on the audio track and selecting waveform display. We need to align the videos and there are three ways to do this. The first is to use the built-in audio alignment. The second is to visually align the waveforms. And the third is to visually align the images. We'll start with the first one, automatic track synchronization using audio. Select or lasso all of the objects and then right click on the first one to open the dialog. Select align other audio objects with this track from the pop-down menu. This should automatically align all of the objects, but you should go back and make sure that they are actually aligned. The next method is to visually align the waveforms, and it helps if you have some obvious audio event, like a clapper. I didn't have one, so I had to manually line up my tracks using the cough. Turn the sound on on all tracks so that you can listen to them to see if there's an echo. With no echo, it should be okay. Zoom in tightly on the tracks for more precision. To align the tracks visually, you can only see the video in the preview monitor that it's on the highest number track. In my case, this would be track 5. If you want to visually line up the tracks, search for an obvious event in the videos, place a playback cursor, note what you see in the preview monitor, then turn off the image on that track by using the eye switch in the track box at the very left. Now you'll see the video on the other track. Go back and forth, moving from one video to the other until you get them lined up. You can also zoom in tightly on the video tracks to try to line up the images. Go through the above procedure to line up all the tracks, either by sound or visually. The next step is to apply any effects to the video tracks that need some work. If you don't do this now, you'll have to edit later each and every object that goes on to track 1. An example would be to adjust the white balance of the videos to get them as close as possible to each other. Do any other effects that you want to apply to the entire video before going to the next step. The next step is to determine which audio will be the master. Listen to the audio of each track by turning off and on the sound for the audio tracks by using the mute switch at the left of the track. If a track needs cleaning, this may be a good time to do it while it's still one object. In my case, I could remove the cough and any other unwanted sounds now or later by using spectral cleaning in Audio and Music Lab or Audio Cleaning. Once all of the tracks are aligned and the effects done, turn on the multicam mode by clicking on the icon with the two cameras. A warning may appear on the screen about overwriting track 1. 
Now this automatically turns the tracks with the videos and audio into multicam tracks and mutes the sound and image of the audio tracks. Wherever there's a blank space on a multicam video track, there will be a solid color bar, as in my example. Two boxes will appear in the source monitor, one for each camera or video, and each uses the associated color code. Of course, if you have more than two cameras, you'll see more than two boxes in the source monitor. To select the master audio track, right-click in the blank area of the correct track box at the left of the screen. From the pop-down menu, select Multicam, then Master Audio Track. A blue bar will appear in any blank space on the track. Before continuing, it would be a good idea to trim the beginning of the videos to have the start of each one at the same point. In my example, I'll just trim the part on track 5 so that the start is aligned with track 3. Instead of trim, I'll just drag the bottom left handle to the right. Now we're ready to start the action. Place a playback marker at the beginning of the video. You'll see the different videos in the boxes on the source monitor and nothing in the preview monitor, usually. Select one of the tracks that you want to, as the starting image by selecting the box in the source monitor, not by clicking in the timeline. Press the spacebar to play. The video selected will be copied to track 1. Maybe not simultaneously, but it will be. While watching the action in the source monitor, select a different camera where you want the change to occur. The associated video will be copied to track 1. Keep going and switching back and forth between the cameras to compile your output video on track 1. When you're finished, press stop or the space bar to stop the playback. Now, look at tracks 1 and 2. Track 1 will have video objects corresponding to the video that was selected during playback. Since tracks 1 and 2 didn't start quite at the beginning, I just dragged the start back a little bit. The audio track also has objects that are cut at each change of the camera. However, the audio is all from the selected master audio track and not from the associated video. Review what you've done on track 1. If it's not really what you want, put the playback marker at the beginning and redo the exercise. You don't have to delete the objects from track 1, since whatever is on track 1 will be overwritten by your new selections. Alternatively, you can delete everything that's on tracks 1 and 2 and start again. In my example, the photographer moves into the scene and I should have cut to the second camera earlier. I can go back and redo the process or simply edit the clips on track 1. In this case, I'll edit the clip on track 1. I need to reduce the clip with the photographer so I pull the lower right handle of the clip towards the left, as is normally done. Note that I'm still in multicam mode, even though I don't need to be. And I'll just close up the gap and take a look. There it is. There are other modes. You can do an insert cut. This inserts material from one of the sources between any position on the target track and the next object. Place the playback marker at the desired position and click on the desired source in the preview monitor. The object gets overwritten by the new one. Another method is to create an overwrite range. You can overwrite the selected area of the target track with one of the source videos. At the upper edge of the project window, select an area to edit by determining the in point by clicking with the left mouse button and the out point by right clicking or use the corresponding buttons in the transport control. Click on the desired source in the source monitor. The target track will be overwritten with the video material from the selected source in the selected area. With multicam mode off or on, I can create crossfades. I'll continue dragging the lower left handle of the right clip to the left, over top of the left clip to create the crossfade. If I decide that I want to redo the entire cutting process or even part of it, I can do so and whatever is on track 1 will be overwritten, including crossfades, obviously, since my new cut will likely not be at the same location. In multicam mode, you cannot include any transition effects on the crossfades, so I'll turn off the multicam mode by pressing on the two camera button. The color bars denoting the multicam tracks disappear and the multicam tracks are muted. 
Now I can add a transition effect to the crossfade. And there it is. We have the alpha magic transition. To show that additional objects can be added, I'll drag a photo onto track 1 at the beginning of the video. I can close up the gap or move everything else to the right if I need more space by selecting the mouse mode for all tracks and moving everything, tracks 1 through track 6, either left or right. Everything still remains in sync. To illustrate a further effect, I can add an image to track 7, which is not a multicam track, and it will show up in the preview monitor. Note that turning off multicam may turn off all tracks, including track 7 and beyond, except for tracks 1 and 2, and you may have to turn the track back on at the left of the track. Using movement size position effect, I'll reduce the size and move the image so that I now have a picture-in-picture -picture effect. With multicam mode turned off, I can continue editing my video in the normal way. I just cannot use the multicam tracks for anything as they're turned off and they contain the video source. However, if I'm finished with my source video and I never need to go back to the multicam exercise, I can delete everything from the multicam tracks, turn those tracks on, and use them for anything that I want. I hope that you now have a better understanding as to how to do multicam editing. Thank you for watching. Enjoy!